We slaughter one another with the stereotypes and mistrust that lingers in our heads. Nelson Mandela once said, we don't have to conform to our stereotypes and we certainly shouldn't be enforcing them. Hello everybody, my name is Avanti and I'm a high school student from California. And I am honored and privileged to stand in front of all of you today to challenge stereotypes and implicit biases on the basis of color, gender, race, croc users, and more. We are going to hear the stories of those who rose to defeat their enemies of equality. And hopefully we are going to recognize some patterns by examining these stories including that of Avanti Ramraj. Yes, that's me. It was either do this TED talk or start a YouTube vlogging channel, and my mom was pretty clear about which of those things I should do. So, armed with the knowledge to defeat our own stereotypes, we can slay the dragons of inequality and hopefully craft a future without any bias at all. You may be wondering about the title of my speech, A Brown Girl in the Ring. Well, the fact is that it is based on a famous Boney M song. This song is based on a game that was often played by youth in the West Indies. And this game is a great manifestation of two key tenants that play a huge role in overcoming stereotypes. Gamification and role models. In this game, a group of children form a circle and one child is chosen as the leader, AKA the role model. Just like the second verse of the song, show me your motion, the child shows his or her moves to the rest of the children and they all imitate. Then that role model child chooses a partner and the partner becomes the next brown girl in the ring. And the game goes on and on. And so I first want to talk about that first key tenet that this game illustrates of role models and trailblazers. I consider Lupita Nyong to be a trailblazer. Do you? Of course you do. She's a treasure. But if you haven't heard of her before, here's a little bit about what she's accomplished. In 2014, Lupita won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in the movie 12 Years a Slave, becoming the sixth black actress and the first Kenyan actress to ever win this award. But in an instant, Lupita had become an inspiration for millions of women across the globe, especially women like me. Women with unmistakably dark skin, even after Zoom tries to touch up our appearance. Women like me who use makeup shades like deep dark, cocoa, chocolate, or brownie. At least that's when we find any shades that actually match us. Lupita was invited to speak at a Hollywood fundraiser where she shared the story of a little girl who had written to her. The girl said that she was just about to go out and buy skin lightening products. Products that contain dangerous chemicals like lead and arsenic but she stopped the moment she witnessed Lupita's rise to fame. Because Lupita had broken the age-old stereotype that only fair is beautiful. She had proved that beauty and talent is diverse and that that diversity truly rocks. Lupita had shown this girl the path to her own success. The existence of these role models serves as powerful imagery for the next generations to visualize not only who they want to be, but also who they can become if they are to shatter their stereotypes. As a girl in STEM, I'm on a tough path, but I discovered that Lupita was a role model and trailblazer. As women continue to break new ground and the glass ceiling, they'll have a compounding effect. They'll function as role models for the millions more watching or reading their stories. They will become the next brown girl in the ring featured in that very game as a role model and leader that children and youth will imitate and use as inspiration to find their own success. 
And this compounding effect isn't limited to famous singers or Hollywood actresses or even just Beyonce. God bless her, though. It takes place in every field, from the arts to the sciences. Which brings me to my own personal story. One that displays both role models and gamification in the process of shattering stereotypes. In fourth grade, I co-founded a community robotics team and became a part of a global robotics organization called FIRST. FIRST stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. And might I say, my nine-year journey through FIRST truly transformed me. It changed me from an impish fourth grader, or I guess that's just a regular fourth grader, to a passionate STEM ambassador. STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and math. And I scaled previously unimaginable heights as I discovered my strength, confidence, and compassion and represented the United States in international competitions and drove global outreach. But I also discovered that there are not a lot of girls in STEM. Research has shown that girls' interest in STEM drops around the age of 15. This is probably because, according to society's standards, it's more hip to be a cheerleader than a robotics programmer in high school. According to the American Association of University Women, Women make up only 28% of the workforce in science, technology, engineering, and math. And even when they get into the STEM workforce, on average, women make $15,000 less in salary than men. This hits especially hard for Black and Latino women who on average make $33,000 less in annual salary than men. But the fact is, the only reason for this difference is stereotype, bias, and unequal treatment. Studies reflect that when little girls and boys were asked to draw mathematicians and scientists, little girls were twice as likely to draw men. And little boys almost universally drew men, often in a lab coat. But the thing is, little girls and boys perform equally well in the subjects of math and science, meaning that stereotypes threaten and prevent women from reaching their full potential. As a girl in STEM, I am on a tough path, but maybe it's one where I become a role model. Through research done via the United Nations, my team and I discovered that 884 million people across the globe 75 million being in India alone are at risk from life-threatening diseases from polluted water. 3.4 million of those people die each year from waterborne pathogens. My team created a small, low-cost, do-it-yourself water filter that after a lot of hard work and nights where my mom finally let me stay up past 10, we were invited to present. At, in front of many high-ranking officials, including those from the U.S. Patent Office, at the 2018 Global Innovation Awards. My team was chosen from amongst 40,000 first LEGO League teams as one of the top 20 in the world from across 80 countries. But the thing is, I wasn't even that excited about the great big trophy that laid as the prize at the end. And in fact, my team didn't even win that award. I was excited because my dream of making a change in the world was finally feasible. It was at my fingertips. I had a way to reach those affected in India and across the globe. Maybe I was finally worthy of hanging out with Malala. I was a girl in STEM. And I had shattered by stereotype because I made a difference in the community around me and around the world. I then discovered that second principle that makes a huge difference when it comes to overcoming stereotypes, gamification. I know for certain there's one thing that children love a lot, games. In fact, we all love our games. 
Why do we spend so much time watching sports and cheering on our favorite teams? Why is it that the entire country of India pauses when there's a cricket match? From the days of the gladiators, games have always drawn vast interest in crowds. The only difference is that the gladiators were not vastly overpaid. Games make us feel a part of a community, and they're especially fun when you get to make fun of the losing side. And so that brings me to the important concept that is gamification. But what truly is it? Gamification is defined as the use of game mechanics, research, design, and experience to engage and motivate people to achieve certain goals. Via First, teams like mine in robotics apply gamification to our robotics matches. We build a robot and then we compete with millions cheering us on. Okay. I may have exaggerated a bit there. It's typically a few enthusiastic teammates and some even more enthusiastic parents, but when they scream loud enough, it sure does feel like millions. <laughs> and so what if we could make those robotics matches more popular? How many more youth, how many more girls would it interest? And how many more underprivileged youth would we be able to get involved in the STEM activity? Not everyone is cut out to be a star athlete. My tennis instructor was very clear about that. <laughs> Maybe even a little too clear. That's all right, though. It's true that the possibility of a high school athlete becoming a tennis star is one in a million, and we still cheer for kids going down that path. But why not the same cheering for girls in STEM? Why not the same cheering for a girl who might one day become an award-winning lawyer or the next president of this nation? Why do we only have cheerleaders for sports? Why not have them for robotics and science fairs? We need kids of all colors, all gender, all race to imagine themselves as future CEOs, medical professionals, scientists, engineers, whatever else they want to be. We need gamification to hook them in, and we need the support structures necessary to cheer them on to excel. I'd like to encourage all of you, my esteemed audience, to motivate your children, your grandchildren, anyone around you to look around themselves. If they see themselves competing and succeeding in a field where there are not many others like them, they are doing a good thing. They are shattering a stereotype. And with the two tenets we've discussed today of role models and gamification, we can only continue to break these shatter, shatter these stereotypes one by one. Because in the end, black or brown or white or girl or boy or identifying with both, even if you're wearing Crocs with socks, shouldn't ever matter when it comes to chasing your dreams. Which is why I am so proud to be a brown girl in the ring. Thank you. <laughs>